Hello and welcome back to Tony Northeastern and another episode of building this station, so Shields. And what we're going to concentrate on in this video is building those loading bay doors. Now I've gone through all the photographs that I have and there's approximately four pairs of those double doors and two single doors um, but on the um, platform two side I'm not sure how many doors there were but I'm just gonna guess it I suppose because most of the photographs I've got seem to focus on platform one so let's make a start so we have our dimensions and we have the sets of doors on how I would like them to be and this is the one that was in the photograph so the panel, door panels on the right hand side there's another photograph with one set of doors open so I'll make them as open and there's two sets which, is, which I can make out that's on platform 2 which are closed and permanently locked and there's also two single doors as well on platform two. The thing I want to do is mark out for the double doors, which is 30 mil tall. So if I mark that at 30 mil, and then cut the strip off at 30 mil. The plastic card I'm using for this uh, little project is one millimeter thick, so it's a little bit thicker than the stuff that I used on the rose windows. So I'm hoping to get quite a few doors out of this one. Right, so it's. Uh, 14 mil. See, 14 mil is not very wide. Now that we've cut our strip of plastic card to the, to the height of the doors, which was 30 mil, now I'm going to separate the doors individually. So I'm marking out 18 millimeters per double doors. I'm just going to deeply score them. And then I'm going to mark them with a pen so I can identify each pair of doors. We have our five double doors. Um, I've cut off the excess. And what I'm going to do now is score the lines to represent panelling on both sides um, of the doors. I have marked the, the woodwork onto the doors on both sides. Um, readiness and um, what I'm going to do now is concentrate on the little doors. Um, making up the, the cross members on one side and the framework that goes around the doors. Now for the framework around the doors I'm using 1.5 millimeter thick strip just to make the framework. Right, so you're kind of getting the picture now what I'm trying to do with the little doors. As you can see I've got a 2.5 wide strip on the bottom and then two uh, one millimeter strips on the door, um, 10 mil up from the base uh, for the middle one. So I've got all my little bits and pieces together here so I'm just working my way through them doing one little stage at a time and the larger doors are going to roughly be built in a similar similar way so basically I'm making sure that the 2.5 is flush with the bottom and then marking 10 millimeters up for the middle 
additional member. using this same idea with the double doors um, when I come to do those this is the one middle member done, another top one and once all these are dried then we can put the diagonal braces in Like so. Right, and here's one of the doors complete with frame, cross members, and diagonal braces. And if you flip the door around the other side, uh, you just get the paneling. So that's one of those done. Um, I've got two more to make like that. Right, I have made these small doors. I have a spare one which will come in handy I'm sure. Uh, so it's time to move on to the bigger doors. Right so here we are we're on to the bigger doors now. So what I've done is I've, I've scored through these doors again so they're virtually ready to snap. The idea being is I want to make all these doors together and then just cut them through when they're done. Let's see how I get on. So the first thing I want to do is to glue a strip, a two mil, two mil strip right across the length of all the doors there. Now this two mil strip is only 2.5 thick, so it's very thin material. So that's what I'm going to do, just run that along there, and glue that onto the bottom edge, and then build them all together. Just make sure that's flush to the base. this off. Right, so the next thing to do is to cover the joints where I've just scored. So when the glue goes off we can score through that again and cut right through the middle of the piece that we're just about to stick on. So he says, but what I'll do though before I do it, I'll just give that a nice score again, just to be sure. And then cut through there. Yep. Basically what I'm doing is, I'm just making the frames up. Right, as you can see I've glued all the um, uprights on, ready for the doors, and the cross member across the top. So what I want to do now is separate the doors now. Um, yep, separate the doors. 
so with them already been scored quite a few times we should just be able to just pop them off quite easy just got to find the groove that was there originally So hopefully by doing this, I've left a little bit of the frame this side. So all I've got to do is put a little bit this side as well. And then um, we've got the basic framework for the doors. Right, so the doors came away quite easily. And um, they now have a frame around the doors. But we have to create them into double doors. So what we'll have to do is to glue a strip into the centre of the big door that we have at the moment to create it into two single doors like these. So that's an easy bit. So what I've done is I've just stuck that in the middle. Just make sure it is in the middle. in the middle and then once this is dry I shall score down the center of that and it'll look like two doors so I shall continue until I get them all to this stage and then we'll get back to you right um, I've glued all the strips into the center of the doors now so I'm just going to turn this single door into a double door just by scoring the plastic strip and once all the other cross members are in you would think that was two doors there right here's the first set of double doors complete and uh, these doors are open so let me show you the photograph. Okay, so here's the photograph with the loading bay doors open, as you can see there. On either side. Um, I'm not sure when this photograph was taken, but the rolling stock, blue and grey, must have been late 70s, early 80s possibly, before the closure. Right, so coming back to the double doors, as you can see I've got the running rail in on this, this one. And all it is is 2.5 by 0.2 um, strip with a 1mm by 1mm glued to it and I've also added little stops either side of the frame you have one there and one there so you can can't so the doors won't fall off the rail if that makes sense right and alongside it is the door that matches the photograph that was in the early part of the video where it's uh, closed and locked. Right, so I've only got three more to go. Each piece going into the door is measured and cut to suit just by holding the strip in place, pre-mated of course, and then just marked at the top where it's got to go. it one way and cut it another way so you form a mater ready to take the corner 
with a tiny bit of glue. We can now just drop that in. Like so. Painstake can work this modelling, in it? Right, here we are again. Um, as you can see, I've just made the runners for the doors. And what it is, it's 2.5 strip glued to a 1mm square strip to create the illusion of a door runner for the sliding doors. And basically all I've got to do now is just cut them to length and then glue it on to the doors. Now then, I've worked out the length of the runner rail to be 38mm. So what I'm going to do with this pair of doors is I'm going to glue it to the middle of the rail so it looks like the doors open either, either side so they open up from the middle. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I'm just marking out for 38mm. Just about there. That's one. And I need three of these. Two. Right, so now that my um, rails have been cut, I just got to mark out for the centre and then glue them on. And there you have it, it's got its rails on. What I've got to do now is put a little bit of plastic card either, either end for the stops and then paint them. That's the doors finished with the rails and the little end stops to stop the doors coming off. So I'm having an hour in what colour to paint the doors. Now the doors that we've seen in the photographs are all blue. But that must have come in at a later time. So I'm going to go with the red that I have used on the main entrance doors. So I'm going to paint all my doors in a red colour. And I'll paint these door runners black. Uh, and then we'll um, see what they look like when they're done. Okay, we're moving away from the sliding doors for a moment and we're going to start working on prepping some of the station areas. So what I'm looking at doing here, as you can see with all these different pieces of card, uh, we're going to make a couple of sets of steps. Um, one for the loading bay on platform one and one set that never ever got used on the station. Um, near the end of platform one. So I'm using two mil card, um, which is um, roughly about half six inches off between each step, which is roughly about right in um, scale terms. Um, but the bottom step, I'm sticking on a one piece of one mil card because I want that to be slightly high because of the Metcalf. Um, stone paving I'll be using. So first thing first we'll just quickly glue the base one together. Basically, basically these steps will bring the 
platform down to the ground level. You'll see when they're finished. So basically the platform's 18 millimeters high and with these um, eight steps here we'll bring it to just below the platform by about two to three mil so it's roughly just about right. So I've cut the card 17 mil wide and depending on the length of steps is depending on how many steps you need to do the job. So basically I'm just gluing them together. I'm using PVA wood glue um, just for now because it'll help seal the ends as well. So basically as I'm going I'm just making sure that all the steps are flush on the side edge and on the back edge. And here is the set of steps. As you can see it just comes down from the platform down to the ground level. Um, there will be a brick wall which will come along here and hide this, this edge here so you won't see that edge. So the focus will be on painting these a concrete colour and hopefully I can use this set of steps to go here as well at the goods end of the platform. So okay what I'm going to do now is to try and give some detail to the steps. So what I'm going to do is just get a pen and just score a line into the cord a millimeter and a half away from the edge and press home so hopefully it leaves an imprint of some slabs just like that so I'll do that with all of them so it's quite easy to make an imprint on this card because it's quite soft um, so we'll see what this looks like when we come to paint it I've got to make another uh, two sets like this so be back shortly uh, three sets of steps now all the tops of the card and inside the edges have been sealed with PVA wood glue. Uh, these two have just been done and I'm letting them dry out. Um, once they're dried out I get a little bit of sandpaper and just go down with the steps so it puts a smooth edge on the steps so it looks like they've been worn a little bit. So this one was dried out oh, about an hour or so ago and uh, I've given them a, a rub down with a sandpaper down on the front there just to round the edges off. Right, and I've only just this minute stuck a little bit of stone walling on the side so this is ready for painting so let's see what paints I'm going to use so I've mixed up a little bit of paint here um, I've used Mat 240 which is a dark grey and a satin light grey 196 so I've mixed them up and uh, they've got to try and blend in with the colour of the paving stones later on so I'm just going to give them a light dousing across the tops let it soak in and then all I've got to do is then is just uh, pick out the slabs as I'm weathering them So the PVA has done its job and as you can see the paint is not soaking in as much which is what I didn't really want it to do. So that's, that's good. So I'm only painting the tops. Yeah, look 
like I said, so when I come to weathering them, I'll just pick out the individual stones and darken them up a little bit. So you're probably wondering why I've got the doors back at the bench. Well, all these doors are going to need door handles. So what I've come up with, and we're using these fine scale track pins SL14s. Now they're only 0.5 millimeters thick on the shaft and 0.8 on the head. So they're ideal for making the door knobs. So I'm using a 0.6 drill bit to drill a hole into the door. And I've already pre-cut one of the track pins. I've left it about three millimeters long uh, just below the head there. And then just drop that in and put a little bit of super glue on the back. There we go. And there you have it. I just got to put a little bit of super glue on the back. Now you don't even have to paint these, you can just leave them as they are. There you go, there's one I done earlier. So we've come back to the loading bay doors now and um, what I'm doing now just for the final touches uh, you know those drawing pins you know, those track pins we've just cut to do the doors well I've cut down the leftovers to make handles for the sliding doors I'll show you what you mean. I mean. Just super glue in the on. in place. Like so. So we've got handles to pull the doors open. Okay, that's a, another little piece of the jigsaw puzzle done. Um, the use of the track pins, making those handles for the doors, uh, really has paid off, I think. Oh, by the way, I cut these to about 3.5 long millimeters. Um, that was the ax, um, excess pin after I re chopped the heads off for the door handles. So that's that little project done. And here's where the stairs have ended up. One here and one here. As you can see, uh, it's been weathered. This one's been weathered more than the, the other one because um, this one hardly ever gets used because. Um, once the wall goes here, there'll be an iron rail and fence round there, and there'll be another another door here, a gate, as it were. Right, so as you can see, the builders are slowly getting all their kit together, ready for the station. So, um, I think we shall leave it there, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.